Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I wanted to go through spatial reasoning and isomers in the GAMSAT, which can be quite a complicated topic, but hopefully I can give you a kind of simple approach that you can apply to some of your questions. Okay, so I'm a very small channel, and unfortunately small channels mean small budgets, and last time I did a chemistry video on stereochemistry, I think I was kind of spinning around a mandarin and a few pens. So I've made a slight upgrade this time, and now I've still got a few pens, but I've got blue tack as well. So yeah, moving up in the world. Now, when I think about isomers, I think what I, what I want to get across to you is basically we're seeing if we change one of these groups in this molecule, which, which other combinations of changes are the same as that change and which ones are different. Now, all the unique changes, so all the unique molecules are called isomers, so, or unique isomers. So I hope that'll make sense a little bit more in a second, but what I've got here is basically this pen between the middle is a bond between two carbon molecules. So these big bits of blue tack are our carbon molecules and this is a single bond between our carbon molecules. Now, every carbon atom can form four bonds. That's a very important concept. So all of these other pens that are sticking out of the carbon are bonds to hydrogen molecules, we'll say. So we're just making up a molecule here, and you can see that basically this is two carbons bonded together, and each carbon has three hydrogen pens which are bound to that. So each carbon's forming four bonds all to hydrogen. Now what an isomer is, is if I replace this group, so by putting a blue tack on it, you need to use a little bit of imagination here because of the, the budget filming, but this pen now is no longer hydrogen, it's something else. So we have substituted that and now we can see that we have a different molecule. So now instead of it being hydrogen, let's say it's chlorine or something like that. Now basically my question to you is, which, how many isomers are there if we just have a mono-substituted isomer? So if we just change one group like we did here, how many of these combinations are actually the same? And what I mean by that is, because this is, it's quite a fluid molecule, a lot of these are actually, even though it's not in this position or this position, if it was in that position, so if this, let's say the substitution, instead of being on the purple pen, was on the blue pen here, that's actually the same as the purple pen. And I'll show you why. So because there's a single bond here between these carbons, we can actually, these actually, in reality, these carbon molecules actually rotate around. So you'll notice before that that purple pen was at the top, but I've just rotated that blue pen up to the top. So just by rotating the molecule, if you can rotate the molecule and not break any bonds, it's actually the same isomer. So when we're talking about a substitution here, it's actually the same as if it was here or here, because we could just rotate that carbon and reach that other configuration. So only unique combinations are indeed new isomers. So we've discussed if we substitute one of these hydrogen here for another atom, it's exactly the same as if we did any of the other ones because we could just rotate this carbon and reach that configuration. But what if we substituted something on the other side? Is that a new isomer or not? And the answer is actually no, because we could actually, so let's say we have that here. If we go back to our original one of this blue one, we could reach that configuration just by flipping this molecule around and then twisting it around like that. I've now got to where the, white, the other white pen was just by moving the molecule. So if we can move the molecule and not break any bonds, that is not a unique isomer. So that's basically the key point that I wanna get across here, 
is if you can move the molecule in any way, and remember these can also rotate independently of the other one, then that is not a unique isomer. So with this molecule, we actually only have one monosubstitute isomer. If we replace any of these hydrogen atoms with something else, we can reach that exact same configuration with, if it was any of the other carbons, just by kind of moving the molecule around or twisting some of these carbons and rotating the attached hydrogen groups. And just because this is a really important concept, I'm just gonna go through this quickly and say, if we substituted this hydrogen with a chlorine, so we want it here, we could reach that exact same molecule by substituting this one and turning it up, this one and turning it up, this one by flipping over and then turning up, and then obviously any of these ones could also just be flipped over and turned up. So regardless of where the substitution occurs, we can move any of the other hydrogen atoms to that position without breaking any bonds. Now that was, as I said, monosubstituted isomers. So if we substitute one of the molecules with something else, but it gets a little bit harder when we introduce another substitution. So there's our first substitution and there's our second substitution. So you can probably see that it doesn't matter if I substitute it on the purple one or the blue one, it will be the same molecule because I can just move them around in space and reach the same thing. But if I moved this one over here, so we've got the two white pens and now the substituted ones, you see that it does, that's a different isomer because these, the, the groups that are substituted are now bonded to different carbons. So if we, for example, so if we, so I need to move that back into frame. So if I start here, if I bond, if I substituted this one and this one here, I will not be able to make this configuration. So if I can't move the hydrogen, or sorry, if I can't move the groups to represent this exact configuration without breaking bonds, then this is a new isomer. So this is a completely different molecule because we have a substituted group attached to different carbons, and there would be no way to move a substituted group here to here without breaking a bond. We could rotate it, but we can't move completely move that group. However, if we, if we had, instead of that one, we had this one, we could reach that original configuration because this can rotate up and that is now the exact same molecule as we had before with the two substituted groups at the top. So it doesn't matter where we substitute on this group because they can rotate around independently and get to the same configuration, but we can't move any of these two. So you need to just think about all the possible configurations of each molecule. It does also change a little bit if we have double bonds. So if we look at this now, I've now got two pens in the middle there. And whereas before these carbons could rotate independently, they now no longer can. If you think about trying to rotate these, if I twist one of these, eventually I'll need to snap the pens in half to keep rotating that. So again, it's all about not breaking bonds. So if I can't change these, if I can't rotate them and not break a bond, then I that's, that's going to be a new kind of isomer. So it's all about those bits where you can rotate. So these carbons now actually can't rotate and that has a little bit of an implication on the, the molecules that we can make. So if we have a mono substitute isomer, that doesn't really matter because if we want to reach this, if we, substitute, if we substitute it down here, we can just flip it up and that's the same molecule. If we substitute it here, we could just flip it over so I'm not breaking any bonds, that's the same molecule. And if I substitute it here, I could flip it over and flip it over and I haven't broken any bonds and I've reached the same molecule. So if we, we still only have one mono substitute isomer, but if you remember back to the last example, when we had di substitute isomers, it didn't really matter what position they were on if they were attached to the same carbon because they could independently rotate. But if we look at this example here, if we, so that would be one isomer, 
And for the previous example, I said that I could attach it to any carbon here and I could just rotate this one up and move it to the top. But you'll see now if I put my substitution on the bottom, I actually can't rotate this molecule. So this is actually a new isomer is having them on different across in this kind of diagonal pattern. Whereas for the when we only had a single bond there, I could rotate this carbon independently. So leave this one where it is and rotate this up to the top without affecting that one. But I can't do that now. So to get this one up to the top, I would either need to move that one, which means that's a different molecule, or I need to break a bond and I can't break bonds. So this would actually be a new isomer. So just to summarize all that, the really important thing is just thinking about which groups can rotate and therefore which combinations of groups are actually the same. Because if they're the same, they're not a new isomer. So we're only looking for the number of unique combinations that can be made. All right, so just to go through some more complicated examples, I don't have enough pens or blue tack to be able to make these things. So we're gonna to have to go through it drawing, but that's also better because this is what you're going to have to do in the GAMS app as well. So if we just look at, let's say, this first molecule here, this is exactly what I just drew before. So we'll start with a mono substitute isomer. So how I would do it if I was in the GAMS app is I would draw this molecule out and then I'd just put like an X or something there. So I'm substituting one of the hydrogens and I would just think if I, if I substituted that one, how, if I substitute any of the other ones, could I move it there? So if I substitute this hydrogen, that would be very easy. I could just sub, I could just kind of flip that molecule. I haven't broken any bonds and I would be able to get the exact same configuration. If I was over here, that would be easy. I'd just flip it this way. So just kind of over on itself like that. Haven't broken any bonds and that's great. And if I was here, I'd just flip up and then across that way. So I'd just flip it up and over. So this is exactly what I did before. So that is only one mono substitute isomer. Gets it. And then as we go, we just need to think about what would happen if I had a di substitute isomer. So this is my first combination and I could reach that if I substituted here and here because I could just flip the molecule over and I've reached that same thing. But if I substitute here and here, there is no way to do that because this carbon can't rotate around. So that, so that would be one unique combination. And then I would just go through and try all the other ones. So maybe I'd do something like this. Let's say, okay, what about that? Is that a different combination? So it's different to what I had. I can't reach that any other way. So what would be the same as that? Well, if I substituted these two, that's actually exactly the same because I could just flip it over. So it's all really just about finding all of the unique combinations and then thinking about a way to kind of spatially change those things. So I know this, is, this might be a little bit hard at first, but the more you get into practice of drawing out molecules and thinking about which parts can rotate around and which parts you need to flip over and how you can not break any bonds and things like that, you will get better and better at this. So moving on to the second example, if I did here, I can you can kind of already see what I'm getting at. If I went here, here or here, I could just rotate the molecule around without breaking any bonds and I could reach that. And obviously as well, if I, if I substitute down here, I could just turn the molecule over. So I could reach that position and any of those other hydrogen positions from any other position. So that's only one mono substitute isomer. But when you get into kind of di or tri substitute isomers, that's where you start actually getting into a little bit of trouble. And I think the best way to go through these is to kind of try to try to find patterns between the molecules. So for example, I've got one here and then one here. So I'm thinking I've got two on opposite. So you can really kind of make a story about it. So this is obviously a square. So I'm thinking I've got two on opposite sides of the square. There would be no other way to do that other than have them on opposite sides of the square. But the other thing that I need is on the lower square, I need to have 
this group attached to a different kind of plane. So I guess what I'm, I'm trying to explain quite poorly is that I've got here, here, and here. So there are no, there are no direct connections between these carbon atoms. So I would instantly know that that's what I need to find an, the actual same molecule. But if something had, let's say it had a bond here, here, and here, I can actually see that these two carbons are bonded together. They're directly bonded together. So although these are on the opposite sides of the square, I actually know that this is a unique combination because I won't be able to, because I've got so many molecules there, there's no way I'll be able to move this one over here which would be my original configuration without breaking a bond. So if you can kind of find little patterns like that about which things are, where things are in relation to other molecules, that's the key to determining if that's the same molecule or if it's different. And this last one might be, you know, kind of a similar example of that. So if I substituted these two, you can kind of think, well, the only... If that means that these two are adjacent to each other. So that would be the same as substituting here and here, or here and here. I'm going to run out of colours. Or here and here, you get the idea. Any that are adjacent to each other, I could just twist that around and get to that. So in all of the ones that are adjacent are actually the same molecule. So I'll just I will actually write these all in. So you can see that all of these combinations are actually the exact same. Now I've just reset this, but you can see that if I substitute here, that's very different to the combination that I had before. I won't be able to make that green one anything like that. So this is a new combination. So I tested all of the combinations where they're adjacent, and now I'm testing the combinations where I move one of those, those crosses, those substitutions. And you can see that there's no way to make these fit. So you can kind of start thinking, well, the only way I could do that is because these ones are kind of, they're one apart. They kind of skip that carbon. So I would know that this would be the same and this would be the same. So it's all about just trying to find those patterns. So try not to think about it too technically just try to describe a pattern to yourself and find those patterns. And then basically you just need to find all the unique patterns and all of the unique patterns will be the number of isomers that you have. So I hope that video was helpful and you weren't too put off by the budget uh, chemistry molecule that I put together. But I do think that being able to spatially reason and move these molecules around in your head or on paper or something like that is a very useful skill for the GAMSAT. So I'd really recommend that you Watch this a couple of times, practice and draw things out and then see if you can kind of argue to yourself which isomers are exactly the same as each other and which ones are different. And you'll slowly come to your own process about how you find those unique patterns. So again, I hope this video is useful. If it was, I'd love it if you could like the video, uh, give me any feedback in the comments and subscribe to the channel. But otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.